Eleanor, what you looking at, baby girl? A perfect strawberry. What? Already? Yeah. Oh my goodness, you are right. That strawberry is just about as perfect as they come. Are you gonna pick it? Yes. Yep, well that's our very first strawberry here on Head Family Farm. I'm excited, you gonna try it? Yeah. Yeah, all right, there you go. All right, show it to us. Hold on. And there's there we go. Seeds right there. Yep. All right. You gonna wipe it off and give it a, give it a go. Is it good? It's perfectly ripe. Perfectly ripe. Can I try? Yeah. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna take a bite of this perfect strawberry here. It's perfect. It's very good. Yep. So are you excited for the rest of our strawberries? Mm -hmm. We've got two green stalks filled with strawberries. And we also have some that might be ready in a couple days over here. Yeah. So we are excited to see how these strawberries continue to grow out. I think you can tell which ones wind up getting the most fertilizer. The ones in the middle. The ones up top, they get fertilizer, but because they're in a green stock, it drains down and the excess water goes into the next one and then into this one. So it's looking to me like this, one right here. this is about where the most fertilizer gets deposited. What do you think? Yeah, and this is really cool because it's our first strawberry of the year. It sure is. And All right. I think I better get back to work. Yeah, because we've got some important stuff today. We sure do. I have a pageant to go to. Yep. <laughs> so the girls are going to be busy today. Like Eleanor said, they're going to a pageant today. And they're going to be there all day. Uh, Eleanor is crowning at a pageant that she won last year. And she's so excited uh, to get to crown, uh, because some of her friends are in the pageant. Uh, but she loves to build up others. And that's something that, uh, I'm so very proud of for her. Uh, but anyways, uh, while the girls are busy, uh, I am going to run down a little south of here to Jemison, Alabama, to one of our favorite places on earth, Petals from the Past. And so I'm headed down there today uh, to take Jason Powell's uh, Antique Roses class. And uh, after he teaches us about a few different varieties of roses, he's also going to take us out into the gardens at Petals from the Past and teach us how to uh, best prune our roses. And that's something that I desperately need to learn about today because we've got this big old Peggy Martin rose that's growing on the south wall of the shop. And we have got to get it pruned while we're still in February before the really warm weather starts rolling in. So I'm going to ask Jason Powell today uh, about how I should go about pruning uh, our climbing roses. So come on with me, let's head on down to Petals and see what kind of trouble we can get into. So something I'm really excited about as I go to this class is that for Christmas, a couple of our dear friends, uh, Tracy and Jean Brittnow at Just Dig It Farms gave us a Petals from the Past gift card. And so I am gonna use that gift card today. I've got a couple of things in mind that I want to uh, get while I'm down there. And uh, I will show you uh, everything that I look at and what I buy while I'm down there. Uh, but I'm so excited to use that gift card, uh, especially because whatever I get today from Petals is going to go in the Potager Garden. And so, because our friends, Gene and Tracy, uh, gave us those gift cards that we're going to use, uh, that means that they are some of the very first ones to contribute to the special plants in the Potager Garden. So 
So thank you, Gene and Tracy. We love y'all so much, and uh, we hope to see y'all soon. Good news and bad news. Good news is I made it to Paddles, and uh, I am excited to be here. It looks like they've got a really good group here, a pretty big crowd today. Um, I'm sure that Jason's uh, uh, Rose class is a big draw, but also it is a beautiful day today. And last time I was here, uh, Jason was telling me that so much of their business depends on what the weather's like. And today is an excellent, beautiful day. Uh, it feels like spring already, even though we're still in winter. Uh, so that's the good news. The good news is I made it to pedals. Bad news is I just realized I didn't bring my wallet with me. So I will be limited <laughs> today in what I buy uh, by the value of my gift cards that are brought with me. So extra thankful for the gift cards now. Um, my plan is changing a little bit uh, in terms of what I will buy. Uh, but, uh, I'm still going to be able to get something that will be very special and very practical as well for the Project Day Garden. But first, it's time to go in and enjoy this class about roses. I always have an awesome time at Petals from the Past, but there was something special about this class on roses by Jason Powell. He is so passionate about roses in particular and horticulture in general, and they have done such a wonderful job at Petals from the Past of uh, cultivating that love, if you will. Sorry for the pun, but I had to use it. They have cultivated this love for horticulture and gardening and community in so many folks over the years. And I am so thankful for this group of folks and definitely Jason in particular. Here, you can actually see he's talking about our favorite rose, the Peggy Martin rose, which is the rose that I'm going to be uh, pruning back whenever I get home. Here he's naming off things. You can see him kind of counting on his fingers. He's talking about all the different places across the country that this Peggy Martin rose can grow despite the change in climate. It is a fantastic rose and it can grow up to 30 feet in length. So it climbs for up to 30 feet. Now we have seen that happening right in our backyard. So in just a few minutes, I'm going to show you how Jason suggested that I prune this rose. Here, Jason was telling us about the different ways that you can prune roses. On the left there, maybe you can see it. It's a little hard to see. There's a thinning cut diagram that shows how you can thin out a rose. Uh, and this is particularly for kind of bush roses. And then on the right side, there was this... Uh, heading back uh, diagram that shows you how you can kind of just kind of cut that mound shape into it. And as he described all of these different ways that you can prune roses, I was starting to get a pretty good idea of how I should approach pruning Peggy. Then some of us followed Jason outside for a hands-on tutorial. Here he's showing us how he trains some roses, some climbing roses, on the pillars of their rose swag. So it is the next day and I am back home from Petals from the Past. Uh, we just went to church and came back and we're enjoying this beautiful day outside. The girls are hanging out on the trampoline, uh, maybe taking a trampoline nap, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but I am out here with our Peggy Martin Rose and I wanted to show y'all what it looks like now because uh, my project for this weekend will be to prune Peggy back and train her canes on this cattle panel that go up against the house here or the shop here rather. It didn't take me long to realize 
that if I was going to do anything meaningful in the way of pruning, that I had to pull all of the canes away from the cattle panels that attach them to the wall. So I started going through and cutting out the extra canes and extra branches and pulling each of the cane away from the wall so that we could take a look and see what we had there and make a layout of how we were going to reattach the canes to the wall so that Peggy would be ready to grow in the season ahead. Alrighty, so I have got all of the canes pulled away from the wall now. Uh, so we can see uh, what Peggy looks like, what we're working with here. Um, you can see the we've got some really long, uh, really, really long canes here. So I think we've got a lot to work with. And what, I, what I'm seeing now that I've pulled the canes away is that a lot of these canes kind of, they come off of one, um, one bigger cane down at the bottom. Um, and I'm not super upset about that. Um, what I'm gonna do is group our canes. So uh, here we've got a group of three or four and we may not use all three or four of them, but we can choose from them. Uh, and they all come from the same larger cane. Um, and since the rose bush itself is back off of the wall by about two feet, um, that actually gets us to the wall and solves another issue that Jacqueline was worried about specifically. Once I put, uh, once I put all of the canes up on the wall, uh, there's a risk that right here in the middle, it'll be kind of bare. So uh, I'm gonna leave a little bit in the front this first season just to see uh, how, how that works. Um, so it won't just be flat on the wall. She'll be flat on the wall climbing, but also down here we'll have a bush that it comes out of. And maybe that'll look silly. Maybe it'll look beautiful. We're gonna find out this season. I'm going to shape up down here a little bit, but also put the canes up on the top. So now I've got the canes in groups. You can see there's a group that comes off this way. So those will be the canes that we use on this side of the wall. These canes go this way. That'll be the group that we use on this side of the wall. And Jacqueline does want me to try and carry over some over the door. So uh, we definitely have enough length on some of these canes here on that side to get over the door. One half of our Peggy Martin rose uh, is at least roughly placed where I'm gonna put those canes. So um, I'm gonna come back tomorrow and tie these. Let's see if I can show you. See that top part right there is gonna have to be pulled down to, so that it's more of like a straight line. I'm gonna come back and kind of straighten these out, tie them uh, with something stretchy uh, tomorrow, and then do the same side the same way. I'm gonna use six canes on each side uh, which is a lot, but there's a lot of space to cover. So uh, I was very happy with the way these turned out. Uh, I'll show you real quick. Basically, the really simple way that I chose where the canes would go is just where they fell kind of naturally. So this one was down low and I could bend it right there. I'll attach it back there tomorrow. Um, I just have it um, temporarily tied back on with that wire I said I wasn't going to use. So <laughs> I'll get some stretchy stuff and attach it and uh, it'll come from that corner there and it'll go this way. And then two rows up, this one right here, uh, pretty naturally just kind of fell right there. And then this one took a little bit more bending. You can see it comes down to there. I'm going to cut all this stuff out, uh, but it was just about in the right spot and it'll go this way. This one right here comes up here and there. And then there's this one and it comes across and that one is gonna be the first one that goes all the way across the door frame. And then our top one, which is a big boy, uh, is gonna go across too. And you can see I've already got some of my, um, some of my little branches that are gonna come off and grow flowers uh, already started there. So that top corner is gonna be really pretty anyways. <laughs> Something that I like 
that just kind of happened is that <clears throat> I didn't need the long canes right here that are in the middle. And so what I'm planning on doing is cutting it off somewhere in here uh, and letting this front main cane here, the one that kind of comes straight up to the middle, it's going to be almost its own separate little bush over here. It's going to make a little mound um, that will hopefully fill up most of the front of the bed here. And we'll probably plant some annuals through here to uh, take up the space. But I'd like for as much of this bed as possible to be this Peggy Martin Rose. So, so this is where we're at tonight. Uh, one half is at least assigned its spacing and I will come out and finish tying it off tomorrow and I will get this other side tied up as well. Y'all, I'm so very pleased with the way that first half turned out and the way that there's plenty of the bush right here uh, to make that whole mound right in there. Uh, very pleased with the way this turned out. Like I said, over and over again, it broke my heart, y'all. She's all over the ground. She is all over the ground. And there's more over there too that you can't quite see because it's dark, but. Uh, so these will all become cuttings here in just a few minutes. Um, and those canes will be trained. And then this little bushy part will be our mound and I am so excited. We've got about two months until we have our first big show is what I'm thinking. So uh, we'll fertilize here in about three weeks uh, on March 15th. And then uh, hopefully by mid-April, we'll have a really pretty show from Peggy here. I don't cry when it rains no more Or I get dirt on my shoes I don't mind climbing eight more floors Cause these stairs are all heading to you So I told y'all about the gift certificate that Tracy and Jean Britnell from Just Dig It Farms gave us for Christmas and that I wanted to get something special from Petals from the Past while I was there during the Rose class uh, so that I could use it during the Potager build and as I work here in the greenhouse so that a little bit of that love that we share with them can go into the work that I'm doing out here and I can be reminded of them as I work. Uh, because they are just wonderful friends and that was such a thoughtful gift from them. So as I walked around Petals, I thought, okay, what can I get that will help remind me of the Britnells over and over again? So I looked at roses and I looked at some camellias um, and that was really, those were my two focuses because I thought those would go well in the potager. But then I remembered something that uh, Tracy and then uh, Jason at Cog Hill and Jason from Petals had talked to me about uh, last month, and that was this stuff right here, this Berger all-purpose mix. It's what they use for starting seeds and propagating plants at Petals from the Past, and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be propagating so many plants for the Potager Garden. And whenever I have a holiday coming up that I want to give gifts for, I've come to uh, this uh, decision that I would rather propagate a plant and spend time raising it up, and getting it rooted and everything, and then give that house plant or rose or something like that to somebody in my family or a dear friend that I love instead of going to the store and just buying something. And so this would be a super special gift 
for the Britnells to give us. And so I decided to use our gift certificate to get this big old bag of this all-purpose mix, and I will use it for starting some seeds for the potage and probably starting seeds that I'll share with others. Um, and also what I'm gonna use them for today is for propagating the rose cuttings from our Peggy Martin rose that I've been, uh, that I've been pruning back. So I'm gonna use these two inch pots uh, for my cuttings, that's what I like to do my rose cuttings in. And what I've used in the past is just some regular potting soil. So you can see just the uh, kind of mulchy part is up at the top of this. Um, but I like to uh, do a rose cutting that's about that big. It's probably about six inches or so. Um, you can go eight or so if you'd really like to, but six has worked well for me. Uh, so I used potting soil for the last round of Peggy Martin cuttings that I did, uh, but I'm really interested to see if this stuff works a whole lot better, and I, I have a feeling that it's going to. Uh, but I'll put the cuttings in these two inch pots initially, and then put them on trays and keep them watered. And then in just a few months, they'll go in these uh, recycled half, uh, I, I was gonna say half gallon, but I don't think it's even half gallon. So uh, it says uh, 25 fluid ounces, so you know, there you go. <laughs> but I'm gonna put them, step them up to this in a couple of months, and then in a few more months, so for this one right here, probably uh, at the end of summer, late August, early September, I'll step this one up to a gallon size pot and by next spring it'll be the perfect size for planting somewhere here on the farm. So let's open up our new bag of all-purpose mix and get some pots filled with it. got dark on us, so sorry about the kind of harsh lighting there, but it's what we got in the greenhouse. Uh, these pretty party light bulbs up here are great for when I'm just kind of messing around a little bit, but for y'all to be able to see me at all, we had to turn on the uh, LEDs. So sorry about that. That's why it's kind of harsh. It got a little dark. Anyways, we have 48 pots ready for our cuttings and I've got a few canes here that I got from where we cut Peggy up earlier. Now goodness that sounds heinous right? Um, also this uh, it, it's not a shot I promise. <laughs> I did make it in uh, yeah in college this particular glass served a different purpose than uh, mixing rooting hormone but today <laughs> It is rooting hormone. I like to use uh, this stuff, Dip and Grow. Uh, this is a really big bottle of Dip and Grow. Normally it comes in a small one, but I went through a couple of the small bottles and decided uh, I'd go ahead and get a big bottle and put it out here. I would suggest trying the small bottle first just to make sure you like it, uh, especially because it's not super cheap. Uh, but it's got really easy instructions on it, uh, hardwood cuttings, mix one part of this solution with five parts water. These are not hardwood cuttings. Uh, softwood cuttings, 20 parts water with one part of this. And then the medium hardwood cuttings right in between, um, you go 10 parts water with one part this. I, I like to go a little bit heavier than that 20 parts um, water. So I went about 15 parts water with one part of the dip and grow. And that has done well for me in the past with rose cuttings. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, about what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this smaller, uh, the smaller cane just to give you an idea. So this cane is uh, probably about half the width of my pinky, maybe a little bit more than half the width of my pinky. Um, this is the size that I have had um, the most luck with in the last few months. Uh, but this one, which is uh, significantly skinnier, is the size that I've had the most luck with overall. So um, I would not go much skinnier 
than this right here. I really don't know if you can tell how skinny that is. Maybe I'll be able to zoom in a little bit for you there. But next to my finger, it's pretty skinny, uh, but it's not, you know, the tiniest you can get. But I would not go any, uh, any skinnier than that. Plus, uh, I find when it's at this, uh, this width, it has more of these nodes on it. Uh, the nodes are going to be a little bit more spaced out on these thicker ones, um, but if you're targeted about it, you can typically, typically get two or three, uh, maybe four nodes uh, under the soil level, even when it's this thick, and that's what I try and do. So what we're going to do is um, I like to get my container that I'm going to be rooting in. Okay, so here's an extra pot. And I like to take uh, the uh, cane I'm going to take a cutting from and stick it down to where it's almost at the very bottom of the pot. And I like to go up, um, I don't know, maybe that's four inches. I like to go up about four inches, maybe a little bit more uh, up here. So I'm going to cut it probably about right in there. Um, but also, you know what, I'm actually going to cut right here on the bottom because that puts two nodes very close to the bottom and at least a third node underneath the soil. So that's going to get us three nodes into the soil here. Um, also, you can see that my um, rooting hormone is just deep enough to get that third node in there. Um, so let's see here. So we're going to cut it here, right before this little area of growth and some people swear that you've got to have leaves on your cuttings um, that has not been my experience so uh, do your own research there especially if you are not in a situation like I am I've got a ton of cuttings to work with uh, and while this rose is special uh, it's not like my grandmother uh, passed away and so I, I took some cuttings from her funeral or from her house or something like that. Uh, there, the cuttings aren't that precious. I can get more cuttings is what I'm getting at. So I'm going to put this right into my rooting hormone and uh, the instructions say submerge it for three seconds. I go a little bit longer than three seconds and then it's just going to go straight into your soil. I do like to make a hole in the soil with a pencil first. We'll have to use this Allen wrench because I'm not sure what I did with my pencil. So I'm just going to make a hole like this. And I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of soil below the bottom of this cutting. So it's not going to go all the way to the bottom of the pot. And then I'm just going to press in gently around it and we've got our first cutting so that's about what my cuttings and my pots look like uh, there's probably about five inches maybe six inches there above the soil line uh, which uh, I think that that's totally fine I think I also could have cut it off way down here and only left three inches or so two or three inches above uh, but I think this is going to do well so I'm going to go ahead and take some more cuttings at about that same length. So here I'll probably cut there, probably again here. Um, and then this end piece will probably be just long enough to make a cutting out of. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these up. You'll see me putting them either in the rooting hormone or I have a cup of water here as well. Uh, you'll see me sticking them in there as I cut them. I, will, I typically put groups of like three or four cuttings into the hormone at once uh, just so that I can prep the next four holes that they need to go into and then pull them over and do that. It takes me just a few seconds to poke those holes so I find it gives me enough time. So I am going to strip back uh, this growth on here so that I've got enough space for it to go in there. So as I'm doing this work, as I am messing with some cuttings into the evening, I realized that one of the very first videos 
that we put out uh, was very similar. It was me uh, having cut, pruned our big fig tree and showing you how I like to do fig cuttings. Um, but the, the big difference between that video and the one I'm making right now, the biggest difference to me anyways, is not uh, that the video quality is drastically better, even though I, I think it's a lot better than that one, uh, or the sound quality. The sound quality for this video is miles ahead of that one. Uh, or, or any of that stuff. It's not even how many, I put that one in upside down, could I do that again? It's not even uh, how many people are watching right now, even though it's a huge difference. The big difference to me is just how far we've come as a family and the wonderful things uh, that have happened as a result of our moving out to this farm. Uh, it's been four years and three months or so since we moved out here. And uh, it has made such an incredible difference in the life of our family. Um, and I just want to say thank you to all of you for playing a part in that. Uh, a phrase that I started using last year while I was out in the garden uh, is cultivating gratitude. And I said that that's what we want to do here at Head Family Farm. We want to cultivate gratitude. Um, we grow love here on this farm is what we say. Uh, and you can see that happening right here real time. I mentioned before that one amazing thing about the cuttings uh, that I will uh, propagate in this uh, in this all-purpose mix. Uh, one of the best things about that that to me is amazing is that every time that I give one of these cuttings to someone that I love, or every time that I plant one of these cuttings, or take care of the plant that's already out there, or even just sit down to do this work, I'll be reminded of some people that love us and have loved us so well, uh, the Brittnells at Just Take It Farms, but also uh, all of the people that have come into our lives in the last three years or so, uh, whether it be through our channel here or the web work that we've done uh, or whatever. We have, or even our church family, our work situations have changed some since then, and so many people in our lives have contributed in so many wonderful ways. And so for every one of you out there watching this right now, all of you who have had even just the smallest bit uh, of, of influence in our lives over the last few years, I just wanna say thank you so much. Um, really, I, I could not have imagined that we would have this life uh, on our farm, um, and we, we have good jobs. Uh, Eleanor goes to a great school, has just a fantastic teacher this year. Um, and our, like I, I mentioned our church family earlier, I, I could not have imagined how supportive that group of people would be of us and how, <laughs> how easy they are to love and how much we've grown together. So for everybody out there, I just want to say we are so grateful for you. We are so thankful for this journey that we get to go on together. So thank you so much. Um, as we go through this year of 2024, we will once again be paying extra careful care to cultivating gratitude. So that's where I'm going to leave you on, on this particular uh, video. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, I hope that you'll go back if you're new uh, and watch some of the adventures that we've come through so far. I hope that you'll stick around with us in the weeks and months ahead as we continue uh, to share more often with you. Uh, but most of all, even if this is the only part of any video that we've made that you watch, I hope that you'll hear this. You are loved and you are valued, and the world is better 
because you are here in it. So thank you for that. All right, y'all. We love y'all. Y'all have uh, a great uh, week ahead, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, farm friends. Bye.